This is Malika Hook from the University of Colorado discussing glaucoma associated with intraocular tumors in this edition of One Slide in Five Minutes. Coexisting glaucoma and intraocular tumors are not a common occurrence in most ophthalmic clinics around the world. However, the existence of these two diseases can present unique challenges for diagnosis, treatment, and follow-up. Intraocular tumors can cause elevated IOP by direct angle invasion, as is the case with metastatic seeding into the eye's primary ciliary body or iris tumors, angle closure by shifting the iris lens diaphragm forward, which can occur with retinal or choroidal tumors as well as ring melanomas, intraocular hemorrhage with mechanical plugging of the outflow system, pigment plugging of the TM originating from melanomas or melanocytomas, Formation of NVI or NVA, which can occur with melanomas, retinoblastomas, also with post-radiation ocular ischemia, which can be a sequela of both proton beam radiotherapy and less frequently after plaque brachytherapy. Deposition of tumor or inflammatory cells on the trabecular meshwork is another cause. Angle closure due to posterior synechia with inflammation related to necrotic cells. Steroid-related glaucoma when periocular, topical, and or intravitreal anti-inflammatories are needed, post-radiation and inflammation. And then with anti-VEGF agents related to elevation in IOP, which is well documented with these agents. I placed a few pictures here on the right-hand side to give you an idea of the different tumors that can be associated with elevation and intraocular pressure. Choroidal melanomas, which can cause elevated intraocular pressure through multiple mechanisms, both through release of pigmented cells, as well as through a mass effect with pushing the lens iris diaphragm forward. This is an ultrasound showing you this mushroom-like appearance of the choroidal melanoma. This is an iris melanoma, which is masquerading as uveitis with IOP in the 50s. There could be depigmentation of the angle with deposit of tumor cells, as well as increased pigmentation in the angle. And histologically, you can see seeding of the iris, as well as the trabecular meshwork with darkly pigmented cells. Proper diagnosis starts with detailed history, including questions about systemic malignancies. Slin lamp exam is important with emphasis on gonioscopy and dilated fundus exam as well as advanced imaging with ultrasound, including ultrasound biomicroscopy, optical coherence tomography, and fluorescein angiography when appropriate. Different treatment modalities include intraocular pressure-lowering medications, prostaglandin analogs, just as is the case with most glaucomas, is the primary medication class of choice in almost all cases of tumor-related IOP elevation. Caution must be taken in cases where tumors are being followed in the anterior segment of the eye, and prostaglandin analogs induce changes in pigmentation which could be confused as tumor extension. This concern is, however, typically related to only iris melanomas and not other intraocular tumors. When there is a concern in these rare cases, other classes of topical therapeutics can be used. Worries about enhancing conventional and non-conventional aqueous humor outflow leading to liberation of tumor cells out of the eye have not been validated in any study. In fact, there is no clear contraindication to the use of any class of topical IOP lowering medications and the treating physician should use their typical algorithm with a primary goal of decreasing pressure and preserving optic nerve function. What about incisional surgery? All filtration surgery should be avoided in the case where active tumor exists in the eye. There are documented cases of intraocular tumor cells being liberated from inside of the eye to filtration blebs when tumors are not recognized prior to glaucoma surgery. In cases where radiation has already been completed and tumor egress is noted, filtration surgery, including glaucoma drainage device implantation, is a valid choice and has been proven successful in published literature. There are several laser-based options for reduction of IOP. These include both non-invasive options like selective laser trabeculoplasty and transcleral cyclophotocoagulation, and invasive options like endocyclophotocoagulation. Transcleral cyclophotocoagulation is in fact our primary method of treating IOP with coexistent intraocular tumors because of the non-invasive nature, ability to retreat, and lack of plausible tumor liberation compared to filtration surgery and other treatment modalities. In conclusion, lowering IOP in eyes with coexisting glaucoma can be challenging and multiple considerations must be taken into account for both of these complex diseases. Outcomes are worse when tumors are only recognized post-invasive filtration surgery, which may allow for tumor cells to be released from the eye with possible distance seeding. This highlights the need to be cognizant of the possibility of coexisting glaucoma and intraocular tumors and to look for clues on physical exam, including gonioscopy with deep pigmentation and or masses in the angle, iris pigmentation, including sectoral changes and or changes over time, and fundus examination to rule out posterior pole tumors. Consider visiting keogt.com for other educational materials. And you can follow this lecture and other lectures on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram channels as noted in this slide. Thank you for your time.